I had a little bit of bad news this morning. Uh, I had separated one calf that we weren't able to wrangle when I was getting my calves ready for auction. I put her with the bull in the high fence area because I was gonna try and hire somebody to come and pick her up and take her to the auction. And unfortunately, I don't know what happened this morning, but uh, I put some cubes out and she was eating alongside the bull and everything looked fine. And I came back out later and she was dead. So I don't know if the bull just got jealous of the food and butted her in the head because they've got a real sensitive area on top of their skull. I don't know what happened exactly, but rather than just uh, waste that meat, I decided to call a couple of guys that I know, Aron and Memo, to help me butcher her since they have a lot of experience doing that. And they agreed to come over and help me out with that. So we're gonna go ahead and try to butcher the calf and I'll take some video and show you that whole process. We're gonna bring her over in the tractor, in the bucket. We've got some, some uh, plastic totes to put the meat as we butcher it in a table as well. And then we've got all this cleaned up already. This is Memo and this is Aron. And together we're gonna go and get this uh, calf in here. So let's go ahead and get after it. Whereas with most animals, you would field dress them. We're gonna take everything back because we will use her innards as well. We will keep those. That's good for menudo and other things like that. So I've got uh, Memo coming with the tractor now. And once he gets over here, we'll put her in the bucket and then we will go ahead and take her back to the deer processing room. First, we're gonna drain the blood. After Aron slit the jugular vein, Memo raised the bucket to drain all of the blood from the calf. I opted not to show that for those of you who might be a little squeamish. And once we were done, Memo took the calf back to the barn for processing. As you can see, using the chain with the tractor made transporting the calf really easy and we didn't have to put her in the bucket after all. With the calf unhooked, it was time to start the skinning process. For those of you that don't wanna watch the skinning process, I'll put a link in the description to the butchering stage so you can skip right ahead to that. But I wanted to show the entire process so that for those people who have their own animals and they're looking to butcher on their own homestead, they will have some instruction on how to do that. So this video is gonna be a little bit longer, but I again wanted it to be pretty thorough so that you can all get a sense for the work involved and also if you need a step-by-step you'll be able to follow along. Aron chose to start skinning around the head, which is as good a place as any, but you need to be mindful of the fact that you will have to have uh, some place to put the head if you're gonna start there, because otherwise it will lay on the ground if you take the skin off. We had a lid to a bucket that we used, so that is something that you wanna uh, have prepared whenever you are getting ready to start skinning and processing the animal. Next, Aron cut off the bottom portion of each of the legs of the calf. This will make it easier to hang the carcass later for further butchery. This portion of the animal is also a delicacy in many cultures, and we later skin these out to remove the edible portions of meat and the feet or trotters. With those removed, Aron proceeded to skin the remainder of the calf. You can see that Aron is able to easily skin the hide from the flesh. That's because he is always sharpening his knife as he goes along. Technique is also important. As you see, he slides the knife close to the skin, almost like you're trying to slice the membrane between the skin and the flesh. If you drag your knife close to the flesh, you will start to carve off pieces of meat, and that is not what you want to do. 
I found it interesting that Aron decided to skin the calf out without hoisting it up first. When I thought about it, this actually makes a lot of sense. Number one, the animal does not swing around like it would on a gambrel, so it makes it uh, safer and faster to skin it out. And secondly, the skin acts like a protector between the flesh and the ground. ¿Cuántos años tienes en hacer esto? Como unos 20 años. Wow. 20 years doing this. Another thing to consider whenever you are going to process animals at your own homestead is the type of knife that you're going to use. As you can see here, Aron uses a very flexible and long boning knife. That makes it easy to get into all the nooks and crannies, and the flexibility of the knife also allows him to kind of drag it against the skin, as you see here, and pull it away from the flesh. If you use a really rigid knife, you're going to have a harder time doing that. I should also note that Arona is going really fast in terms of skinning this calf out. If you are doing this on your own homestead, especially if this is your first time, I would encourage you to go a lot slower. That way you don't have an accident with the knife and you can also make sure to protect the meat from accidental nicks. So that we could roll the calf over, Aron went ahead and took the head off and then finished out the skinning process. With the skinning complete, it was time to open up the animal so that we could get access to the internal organs. As you see here, Aron carefully sliced through the belly, making sure not to nick the stomachs because cows have actually four different stomachs. He then pulls out the intestines and has his brother hold them off to the side so that he doesn't accidentally nick those as well. He then cuts through the udder, as you see here, and continues to slice down all the way to the pelvic bone. He then used a saw to saw through the pelvic bone to separate the two legs. You want to make sure that when you do this, you don't saw into the intestinal wall or the rectum. So just be careful when you're doing that. Finally, he cuts around the membrane on both sides of the rectum so that it can be easily removed. And then he makes a single slice through the intestinal wall to remove that and the rectum in one piece without fouling the meat. After a quick rinse, Aron and Memo turned their attention to the other end of the calf and proceeded to saw through the sternum so that they could get access to the other internal organs. Next, the guys decided to remove the stomachs from the calf. This is a very delicate procedure and you want to make sure that you go really slowly whenever you're doing this because you don't want to rupture one of the stomachs and have the contents pour out on the meat. It will definitely foul everything. So they had one guy holding the stomachs back while somebody else was removing the membrane that connects it to the rib cage. With the stomach successfully removed, you see it over there on the left, they decided to turn their attention to the intestines by first removing the sheath around the intestines as well as the spleen that you see here. Again, you want to go slowly here. You don't want the contents of the intestines rupturing and fouling the meat. There's also other organs like the gallbladder and the kidneys that can also create problems. So just make sure you go slowly. So there you have it. The intestines were successfully removed, no fouling of the meat. Aron then took out the liver, which you see here. He then removed the esophagus, which is connected to the lungs, the heart, and the sweetbreads, or as we say in Spanish, mollejas. 
we put these to the side for the time being so that we could get the calf on the gambrel and hoist it up so that it could start cooling. While Memo went to get the tractor to take all of the parts that we cannot use, Aron carved out the meat from the tail of the calf. Once he had liberated most of the meat, he used his foot to hold the skin down and pull up on it. And you can see that we got a really nice piece of meat there that we can use for soups or other stock. Next, we carved up the stomachs of the cow. We will use this for tripe, uh, which is used in one of the dishes I like a lot, which is menudo. Now, a lot of you may draw the line at this. I understand it's very messy, it's smelly. Uh, you have to really clean the tripe really, really well, not just with water, but actually with a bleaching agent like lime, what we call cal. Uh, some people don't like to use a bleaching agent and they will uh, boil the tripe and then scrape it down really well until you get rid of all the black. It needs to be white at the end whenever you're gonna use it, but it's worth the effort for me. I like the dish that it uh, supports, and given that this is a calf, I wanna really try and use it for menudo if I can. We then put the hide and the other parts of the calf that we're not able to use in the tractor bucket so that we could wash down our work area. Once the floor was washed, we put down a plastic so that we could clean out the inside of the intestines. This is used for another dish that I like a lot called tripas. You can grill them and they are fantastic, but you have to make sure that you clean them really, really well. You will need a hose for this next part. And as you can see here, Aron uses his hand to hold it around the opening to the large intestine so that the tract fills with water. As the tract is filling, you will want to tap on it to make sure that all of the contents kind of get you know, moved around with the water, and you'll see why in a minute. Fair warning, this next part may be a little gross to some of you, but you have to slice open the end of the large intestine so that all the contents can be released. You should continue tapping and massaging it to make sure that you dislodge any additional particles that might still be clinging to the inside of the intestinal tract. After a few minutes, when it appears that the water is running clear, you can then slice open the beginning part of the large intestine and again, clean it out really, really well. Finally, Aron cuts through the entire large intestine here so that he can see the water inside, make sure that everything is coming out clean and clear. With the large intestines thoroughly rinsed, Aron flips everything over and makes some additional cuts just as a final check. Next, Aron proceeded to clean the small intestines. To do this, Aron makes a series of cuts along the length of the small intestines and then makes a slit at the beginning so that he can put his hose in and rinse out the first section. Again, you'll want to periodically tap and kind of roll the intestines in your hand to make sure that you get rid of all of the contents. Once the water runs clear, you then repeat the same process with the next section. I know many of you are thinking that this is not worth the effort and I completely understand that, but for me, I really enjoy this dish and so I'm willing to go through a little bit of extra work and, you know, I'm not grossed out by the process, so if this is something that does not appeal to you, then certainly you don't have to uh, do this, but I don't like to waste these parts of the animal if I can help it. And 
there you have it. You can see the change in color, so we know that we did a really good job. You don't see any dark material inside the large or small intestines. And just to be certain that all of the water inside is released, you can see he kind of nicks everything all the way around just to make sure that everything is allowed to drain properly. All right, here's our three pus. We'll of course clean those out better when we get inside with the kitchen faucet. After processing the internal organs, Aron removed the udder from the calf. He says that this will fry up nicely in a pan and make some really nice cracklings. Now that we've skinned the calf and taken out all the innards, it's important to let the calf rest a little bit, cool off. You don't want it to go into your freezer really hot because the meat will spoil. So we've been letting it sit here for a little bit just to kind of open up and air out and we're getting ready to start uh, cutting it up now. Aron began by removing one of the forelegs of the calf. It turned out that the containers were a little bit too short, so after he removed it, I asked him to cut it in half so that it would fit nicely in the container. This is a fairly easy cut to make because there's a joint here, so you just kind of find it and cut through it, and you end up with two nice pieces. I don't repeat the same process on the other side, and you can see that this is fairly easy to remove from the carcass because there is a shoulder joint there that as long as you follow the anatomy of the animal, you shouldn't have much problem at all. Another tip is that whenever you are trying to find these joints, let gravity assist you. You can see he kind of drags this part of the leg over the edge of the table once he thinks he's at the joint and that allows it to be exposed so that he can finally cut through all of the meat. Next, I don't want to cut off the neck portion of the carcass. You'll see here he kind of makes a slit in the meat and you'll see him do this periodically. This allows uh, Memo to grab onto it so that he can hold it and turn it if he needs to as you saw there. So that's a really uh, good technique as well whenever you are cutting up the carcass is to make little slits in the meat so that you can grab onto it. Next, Aron made some cuts so that he could remove the fat that was on top of the tenderloin hugging the back portion of the carcass. With the fat removed, Aron proceeded to cut through the flank portion on both sides so that it could be liberated. This will make great fajita meat. Next, I don't cut off the chest portion of the rib cage. This can be used for short ribs or soups. Memo then sawed off the ribs. This is perhaps my favorite thing to throw on the grill. Here again, Aron makes a slit, which allows Memo to easily grab on so that he can cut the ribs. There you go, you get two slabs of ribs. Giant ribs. They then repeated the same process on the other side. This next section is pretty versatile. You can use it for stew meat or hamburger, or as Memo told me. Okay, you can put it in the barbecue as well. I decided to keep this next section intact so that I can freeze it and then slice it into strip steaks later. And as you see here, I got caught by a little shrapnel. But I wasn't the only one who got hit with some friendly fire. 
take the tenderloins out. I debated about taking the tenderloins out. If I had left them in and had somebody make perpendicular cuts in this section, it would create T-bones, which are essentially the filet mignon on one side and the back strap or strip loin on the other. But in the end, I wasn't certain that I would be able to find anybody to do that for me, so I thought might as well have the tenderloins separated. As Memo pushed up on this last section, it exposed a portion of the spinal column. This is another delicacy we call tuetano in Spanish, which refers generally to any type of bone marrow. There's tuetano, the bone marrow. The last thing to do was to separate the two hind legs, and as you see here, Aron made quick work of it. Again, I asked Aron to cut this into two pieces. Unfortunately, unlike the foreleg, there is a femur bone in the hind leg that you have to cut through. The good news is that the femur is narrow in the middle, so it doesn't take a whole lot of effort. And again, if you were not looking to put these in containers, you wouldn't have to cut through that at all. we repeated the same process with the other leg. While the meat cooled, Aron thought it would be a good idea to open up the heart and drain any blood that might be inside. As you can see, this turned out to be a really good idea. So this is something that I will keep with me for future reference whenever I am butchering animals to try and open that up and clean it out really well. Oh, see? Memo told me that this part which covers the heart is called arrachera in Mexico and that they make some really delicious tacos from it. So I can't wait to try it out. These are mollejas right here. Yeah. Mollejas in English are sweetbreads, and they are delicious. As for the remainder, Memo suggested that I put it on the grill with the tripas, and he said that there are pieces of meat on there that are really tasty. That is how you butcher an entire calf. So thank you to Aron and Memo for your help today. I appreciate it. Great job, guys. And uh, we're going to have lots of food this season. Now, ideally you would want to let the meat hang on the bone and age for several days before you try to put it in the freezer. Unfortunately, I don't have the facility here to do that and there's no place open around me that I can take it to. So I'm gonna go ahead and let the meat cool thoroughly and then I'm gonna package it up and put it in my freezer. And later on, I can make some steaks and other cuts from the meat. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have your own ideas as to how we could have done things differently or perhaps better. If you have a comment, please drop it in the comment section below. Just keep in mind that there's more than one way to skin a cat or in this case, more than one way to butcher a calf. And at the end of the day, I'm just glad that these guys were able to help me out on such short notice and I'm able to fill up my freezer with some great meat, so much so that I was actually able to share it with these guys and that's fantastic no matter how you slice it. If you enjoyed this video, please go and smash that like button and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel at Rancher Mike and also ring the notification bell so you'll be informed of new content as I release it. And until next time, take care. If you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up below. You can also check out one of my other videos here and stay up to date by subscribing to my YouTube channel right here. Until next time, I'll see you on the ranch.